Hey everybody, it's Kat here with another makeup tutorial video. Today we're going to do fairy realness. I love to do this look when I want to look ethereal, when I want to look like, almost like I'm straight out of a Disney picture book. I'm starting my makeup look today with a little bit of moisturizer, which is a new trick I picked up. I'm using Super Hydrate by e.l.f. from their Super line, and it's so nice. It has squalene in it to help kind of de-age you a little bit. But I'm just going to rub this in everywhere, and I'm going to make sure I rub it in really, really, really good. Because we ideally want it to dry before I'm ready to set my primer. And then I always move it down to the sides of my ears and into my neck, because that's usually where I go with my makeup too. Um, make sure you get your eyes as well. Do not forget your eyes. Do not forget the creases of your nose, around your mouth, your upper lip, or that neck girl. All right, now that we're done with that, I'm actually gonna do a little bit of lip care too before I start my makeup. I'm gonna use lip oil from Nika K. It's got jojoba argan and vitamin E in it. And it feels and smells wonderful. My smell of choice was blueberry and mm, I'm living for it. Nika K is a Korean makeup brand and they, they do a girl justice. But here's the super hydrate. Looks like this. I believe I paid, I think maybe like 11 bucks for it. It was on sale at the time. Okay, now that we're done with that, we're going to move on to primer. And I think today I'm just going to do a full face of e.l.f. Poreless, which is about three pumps. Go like that, rub it in. The one thing I gotta say about uh, e.l.f. Poreless Primer is it does not smell nice. Like, it smells weird. It smells like um, car cleaner, almost. Getting the bottom of my nose. Getting up here. And I usually use this primer for my eyes as well, because it just has a good stick quality to it. Alright, we're nice and primed. Next, I'm going to go in with e.l.f. 130 Snow. This is my shade. Please use your own shade. Like, don't look like a clown. I have pink undertones and neutral skin. I'm running low on this stuff, too. Now, you can see when you have a good match and it's on your skin, you won't be able to see the line of foundation amongst the line of non-foundationed areas. So, as you see as I apply it, it looks more like it's evening out my natural skin tone and not so much covering the natural tones of my face. And then I always do one last pump, and that's going to be my forehead and my T-zone. And I'm just going to blend that out as well. And as you can see on camera, there's not really a difference once it applies between the foundation and what my natural skin tone looks like. You can't see a big circle around my eyes when I apply it. But just go in, make sure you're getting everything. Uh, both sides of the nose, underneath the nose, your forehead. I always put a little bit on my eye, under my eyes, but I'm going to conceal later. And then just take the product that's remaining on your brush and drag it down your neck. Get the sides of your ears, your tragus area, and a little bit behind the ears to really, really blend it in and make it look good. Oh, I just found a little bit of primer. <laughs> God, I'm going to cry when this runs out. I need some more. I need more of that shade in my life. I don't think I'm really going to switch up into new ones. I thought about trying Il Maquillage, but I'm sorry. Even if I want to keep it, $44 is not worth it to me when it comes to foundation. Um, next, I'm going to set in my concealer. I'm using L'Oreal in shade 352, which is a bit yellow for me but I don't really use enough of it to cause an issue. Dot the corner of the eye, two dots outside the eye. 
I do a dot here. Same as last. You don't really need that giant triangle on your face. All that triangle does for you is it's going to make it so that your natural cheekbones aren't as visible because it's going to wash them out. Nice big dot right there in the upper lip. Just the areas of my face that I feel like really need a boost. The areas of my face that I want seen. And then I always use a beauty blender for my concealer. Just got to tap that in, spread it out a bit, get it to look a little more natural. And then for my eyes, I usually drag it a little bit just so I can really get that under eye before I pat it in. The corner of the eye is the hardest part to get with my beauty blender. but it's worth it so as you can see there's a nice lift to my face and it's removed my under eye bags but i don't look like i'm really trying to insta glam it up you know what i mean not nah, mean um definitely just want something that really i usually go a shade lighter for concealer but nothing too too crazy rub that lip oil back in there. Next, I'm going to set my makeup. Where did I put it? And I'm using the Halo Glow setting power in a light pink because I got that nice pink undertone. A good idea, to give you an idea, most people with pink undertones tend to burn very easily in the sun. So if you get sunburn super easy, you could possibly have a pink and or neutral skin tone. Uh, something else with pink people is we don't really tan. So like if you've ever tried to tan and it just didn't do anything for you, that's a good sign that you probably have a pink undertone to your skin. All right, check in. This is still sticky. So I need some more. Checking for stickiness. We're gonna get the under chin next. And you really, a lot of people forget to like set the makeup that they pull under their chin. Don't do that because you're literally just causing lines whenever you do that. Any place that you have foundation or concealer or a wet sort of product, you want to seal in. So we're just double checking all these areas of our face. We're next gonna get the mid part. All right, run a check. I always use touch to check and make sure that my face is properly set because it's the easiest way to tell. You know, any part that's sticky is not set, obviously. Or at the very least, if you've already run powder over it and you still feel stick, you need more. Okay, running the touch test. Forehead set. This side of my face is having problems setting at the moment, so I'm going to go back in and really 
If you have to dig into your own hairline, do it. The powder's not going to show up like foundation is. And just be super thorough. Like, you know, I don't bake my face. I would never recommend that you bake your face because it really creates that cakey eye of makeup on look. It's only good for the cameras, really. If you want to get super into it, it's only good for the cameras, girl. Like, whatever. Anyways, we're kind of going for a fairy realness look. So first I'm going to kind of touch up my brows and just make sure that they look okay. My typical go-to for touching up my brows is starting behind the natural line and just not using a super huge amount of product. Oh, hi, Bear Bear. <laughs> He's coming to make a video with me. But just kind of accentuating your natural brow shape. You don't want to have to create anything new. And you know, everybody's kind of different. Like, for me, it's hard to do my brows in that instagram way. Because my eyebrows have two different shapes to them. So I really prefer to just kind of keep it natural. Accentuate that they're there with a little bit of dark brown because they're blonde as hell. Call it a day. Next, we're going to move in with some eyeshadow. And for my fairy look, I really only use one eyeshadow color. I'm not always doing the, like, million eyeshadow colors thing. But I'm using early from Bright and Early from Hard Candy. Because it's a nice robin's egg blue. And it creates this real, like, light, ethereal, sparkly look. Because here's the thing, if you're going for, like, fairy realness, fairies don't wear Instagram makeup. Fairies wear a little bit of eyeshadow and call it good. All right. And really, like, you don't want to make garage doors, so don't connect it to your uh, eyebrow. But you still want it to have some good spread to it. You still want there to be a good amount. And then, I am going to go in with one other thing. And I don't consider it an eyeshadow because it's not powder. But it's really just more of a liquid color for your eyes. And it's harder to blend in, so use it cautiously. Radiant Liquid Eyeshadow by Nika K in the color Starlight Glitter. And we're going to use this for our inner corners. And you want to follow it in by blending it in. Like so. And in camera, it's really hard to show, but in real life, it's going to bring that extra bit of glitter in your life. Paint, paint, paint. Tap, tap, tap. And then just take one of your fingers and go like this. Then pull it out a little bit. Um work huge glob that I didn't know was there um something I've noticed about this product is it does tend to make your eyes sting so I don't really like this is my first time using it other than when I practiced this look and you want to kind of like really let it dry out before you're doing too too much tap those tears away but as you can see, it creates, like, this nice glittery lightning effect just to give your eyes that little bit of extra, like, oh, cute, you know?
This is Nika K's liquid eyeliner. I like it because it has a hard doe foot on it. Make sure when you're doing this, if you really want to kind of portray that like fairy look, that you're making sure that your eyeliner points up. You want it to point upward. But I'm going to show you why. So I did my eyeliner two different ways, but not enough to where like if you saw it from far away, you could tell. So here's the look. When you have this, you have this very like, mm, it's a lot cuter than if you just go straight across. And the straight across is not going to do you justice. Just like this eyeliner that I just tried is not doing me justice. But anyways, you want to take it and you want to kind of like just make sure that it's all across the lid and not just on one part of the lid. Because the illusion we're trying to create is imaginary. It's a fantasy creature. It's not going, you're not trying to mirror your makeup like you would in real life with this. So we're just going back in, making sure that we have eyeliner in all the areas necessary. Making sure that it's fairly even, even enough to wear their, si their sisters at least. And then we're going to do this before we open our eyes because this will make sure that we're drying it out. It's not going to spread anywhere because whenever I use new eye makeup, I really don't trust it. <laughs> but while we're here, we're going to move into the face. So the first most important part of this is the blush. And when you're going for a fairy realness look, you kind of want to do something a little more pink. So I'm just going to Tap it a couple times in this dark pink color, and then really zhuzh it into my favorite color, and then smile, because you want to look nice and pretty. And I always go for blush first, because the most important part of fairy illusion is you want, like, a really good blush. And you want it to accentuate your cheekbones so that people really see them. Sorry, I'm not trying to cover my face. I'm just trying to make sure this looks good. Because my biggest thing is I want to give you guys makeup tutorials that look good in real life, not just on camera. So we're tap, tap, tapping that. Make sure you add, apply some blush to your nose and a little bit to your chin. Because when you're a fairy, you have a lot of color. You have a lot of vibrancy. You have a lot going on. Okay, next, we're going to move on to a highlight. And for me, I like to use a good purple highlighter and then maybe apply some pink chill on it just to give it that pink glittery sheen. Something else about not setting your makeup properly, if you don't check to make sure it's set, your makeup will apply funny on top of it. So like, say you don't set it and then you apply this highlighter, the highlighter is going to turn into the setting powder and it's gonna turn way, way too bright for your face. But general rule of thumb, the areas that you want to highlight are the areas that you already highlighted with your concealer. You got that nice glassy look. Next, I go in with a little bit of bronzer. You don't want anything crazy. Like, you don't want to go in too dark. But you definitely want to just like... Oh, 
I usually only go around to the range of where my eye ends just to give it that little extra oomph. And then if you're doing it right here, you want to blend it into that hair and ear line. A little bit of contour on the nose never hurt anybody, but if you're going to contour, stick a little bit right at the base of your nose, like behind where your septum piercing would be. That's where you want to put it because you're trying to give it this like round little tiny cute nose. And to do that, you want to have a little bit of contour. Now, I'm also going to do some contouring on the chin. Something to keep in mind is always blend it into the back of the ear and the hairline to make it look more natural and then pull it down this way into the rest of that neck makeup you did. And usually I start right here because that's the easiest way to keep it like nice and blended. But keep in mind not to use too much. Um, on camera, it's really easy to use too much because you're looking at essentially what your makeup would look like on a stage or on television or at a musical. You're not really looking at what your makeup would look like in real life when you do it off camera the way I'm doing, which is why you see me checking in every once in a while, making sure that it looks good. The lip oil does last a long time. I wish you guys could see what this eyeshadow looks like in real life. Because it's just fabulously glittery. Like, whew. Alright, now that i finished the rest of my makeup, I'm going to go back. And you remember me talking about using Pink Chill here. Just going to get a lot of this product on because it's a little bit sheer. And we're going to tap that pink glitter in. I feel like my makeup aesthetic is very much, um, I, I have a small round face with a pointy, one pointy ear and all this nonsense, you know, and a lot of piercings. I actually have three lobe holes, but I'm only wearing my gauges or my, uh, tunnels right now. I'm at a two gauge. If you were wondering, I am trying to stretch up soon. And always, always, always with a good pixie look. You need a nice, unnaturally colored lipstick. So right now I'm using Vivid Violet from the True Matte Collection from Nika K. Honestly, one of the first liquid lipsticks that doesn't give me butthole lip. And with that, what we applied earlier with that lip oil, that will also help prevent butthole lip. Because nobody wants an anus on their face. Tap, 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 and I haven't tried this color yet, but it smells amazing. Oh, I love that freaking fake raspberry smell. I don't know who decided that Nikki K should go in that direction, but they deserve a raise. One thing I'm noticing about this lipstick, because I love a good purple, is purple's hard to make, and you can tell they struggled. Like, it takes a good amount of time and practice to apply this lipstick. And you have to have patience, because you're building it up. You're not just swooping and the colors there. I'm willing to be forgiving of the brand, just because everybody acts like brands suck just because one of their unnatural colors suck. Purple is one of the hardest colors to make in cosmetics. It's hard to find the right ingredients. It's hard to make it stay. It's hard to keep it from being streaky. It's just hard. Like, you can't sit there as someone who doesn't make makeup and pretend that, like, the entire brand is crap just because it's a little hard to apply your favorite purple. There we go. Now, I usually add some fake lashes to this 
but I didn't grab my lash glue and I don't feel like getting it. Honestly, for this look, I recommend Sparrow. You can see it's number uh, number six or number nine, my bad. And I usually, I like something nice and feathery that gets more dramatic at the end. But if you want to have some good edgy fairy realness going on, this is the way that I typically try to do it with lots of unnatural colors and glitter. And oftentimes I'll take a nice pop in pigments by Hard Candy and just dust myself with glitter and then get my diamond shimmer from Bath and Body Works and like smell real good. But without further ado, this was my whole fairy realness makeup tutorial. I hope to see you guys again soon. And if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe.